Hey, Michael Starr, how you doing, my friend? I'm good, bro. How you doing? I am fantastic. I got to start off with, I was talking to Stick sometime last week, and I told him that when you guys are going to be here in the Florida area, especially around St. Pete, Cheap Trick is also on tour, and they have the night off that you're playing at Janus Live. I don't know if you're going to make a phone call to Robin Zander and see if he'd come hop on stage with you guys. Oh, man. If he could get on stage and do She's Tight, that would be so awesome. I, I know. love Cheap Trick, dude. And they've got your date off the day you're going to be in St. Pete in between Fort Myers and Orlando. So they're in the area, and they have that day off. So I would say give him a call and be like, bro, you live here. You got to come by. Yeah, thanks for the info. You know, it's hard to coordinate all that stuff because I'm so involved in my schedule that I don't think about other people's schedules. But, man, sometimes it lines up to where we can go see other bands play or have them come down. I mean, one time we were playing in uh, Nor- Norfolk, uh, Virginia, and Travis Tritt had a day off, and he came down and hopped on stage with us and did a song with us. And that was pretty awesome, dude. Oh, wow. I had no idea Travis Tritt was even a fan. That's cool. I know, dude. I didn't either. We <laughs> showed up. And so, you know, we showed up at other people's shows and uh, gotten on stage and stuff. And it, that's really, that's what makes the whole, like, touring community a re- even more fun than it already is. Well, and you guys have worked with a lot of big names. I mean, you had Robin Zander, of course, Corey Taylor, Chad Kroger. Is there anybody on your list of artists that you haven't done something with that you want to? Steven Tyler, Axel Rose, Eddie Van Halen. Unfortunately, that will never happen. Uh, David yeah. Lee Ross, Sebastian Bach. Uh, I would love to get the singer from White Lion on the song. Oh, man. You, I mean, there's so many killer bands from the, that era that I love, and, and even new bands. Like, you know, Corey Taylor sang with us all the time, and, and he's always supported our band and, and taken care of us. Same with Kiss. They've taken care of us and helped us. And Def Leppard helped us, and Motley Crue has helped us, and we're just, man, I would love to jam with Vince. Vince it's been a long time since we've sang together, so that, I look forward to that. I actually have uh, gotten to hang out and interview Corey Taylor a few times myself, and he is just one of the nicest people in the world. He's just a normal dude that just happens to be a huge rock star. Exactly. One of my favorite things about Steel Panther that you guys do are your YouTube videos, specifically Science Panther. Um, is Spider going to step in and be the band guinea pig, kind of like Lexi was? Because you guys all did great episodes of that. Thanks. I love Science Panther, dude. That's really a fun segment to do. Yeah, we're going to bring it back and uh, do some of that. And we're actually going to experiment on him. So it should be cool. We'll make him take stuff and see what the reaction is physically for him. And if he's still alive after that, we'll take him back out on tour. Well, and I was asking Sticks about, you know, when Spider joined the band, what was it like hazing him and getting him in? And Sticks was like, man, that takes too much energy. I'll let him haze himself. But would, did you do anything to haze Spider, or are you just like, yeah, we'll see what happens with him? Uh, one time before we went on stage, I I untuned his whole bass. <laughs> when he started the show, he was completely out of tune. And we all looked at him like, what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? You're screwing the whole show up. He's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I told him afterwards, he was so pissed. But, you know, <laughs> everybody has to get hazed, and that's just the way it is, you know. And Satchel <laughs> lets him have it on stage, too. He'll just say something like, hey, make some noise for a bass player who's not good looking and he's overweight, but he likes partying and he likes hanging out with chicks. Spider! <laughs> Oh, God, that's hilarious. Um, uh, speaking, I guess more of Spider. You got Spider and Sticks, who are going to attract possibly more of your B-level groupies. But do you and Satchel, the other pretty one in the band, have to fight it out over the A-list, or do you guys just, like, tag in when it's groupie time? Or, Well, that's the thing about being a lead singer and a lead guitar. You're a guitar player, you're already grandfathered in to the pecking order of heavy metal backstage stuff. So, you know, we get the A. That's when I don't actually have to fight over because we have we have different tastes right so satchel's taste is anybody anytime anywhere (laughs) my taste is you have to you have to be able to read and write that's it (laughs) i you know i don't see those as being too far off from each other anybody anytime and you have to be able to read and write not not super high bars not high bars you just have to be able to text but, you know, if that's what I've all, if we actually have a girl and we both want her 
then we'll just double team her. <laughs> Why not? You're on the road. You get to do whatever you want. Got the new and it's single. It's not illegal. It's yeah. It's safe, it's not illegal, and yes, we got a new single. Tell them about it. Well, I was talking to him specifically about 1987, that amazing year. Obviously, you had uh, Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction coming out and a bunch of other great music. But what was the reason specifically that made you pick 87 for the song? Man, I'll tell you, and I tell everybody this the same way. It's like 1987, in our opinion, was the peak of heavy metal. And before we knew it, it was over. And when you look back at that time of the 80s, it's like it peaked in 90, you know, 1987, and then like four years later, it was just gone. Grunge had killed heavy metal. So, yeah, man, that's, that's what made us pick 1987 is we thought it was the peak of metal. Now, on the new album, On the Prowl, which is coming out in a couple of weeks, which of the new songs do you think is going to be the panty dropper, is going to get the ladies all riled up at the concert? Tough to, tough to tell, man. I mean... Here's the thing about new records. You know, people love new records, but they don't. They want to go hear the old songs too. So you can't play too many new songs. So we're gonna we're gonna play 1987, and then we're gonna surprise everybody with what we pick next. And uh, we'll see, man. I guess the jury's gonna be out. We'll see what gets everybody naked, and we'll keep playing that until we die. Now, do you have it with the venues when you're on tour that like, hey, this is a Steel Panther show. If somebody happens to get naked, we're cool with that. Yeah, we have to clear it. Some places are not okay with it, so we, we don't encourage it. And then some people like, dude, do whatever you want. Some people have a limit on how many people can be on stage because of weight issues for the staging. So, you know, uh, but we played this one place in London called Brixton Academy. It holds about 5,000 people, and we got at least 150 girls on stage. And they were like, still break. We had to tell them to stop letting girls on stage because we couldn't move. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> uh, you you have like uh, just the sweetest life in the world, don't you? You know, I feel very grateful. We all do in Steel Panther that we have been able to do what we love for so long, and it's not slowing down. It's only it's only picking up more steam as we go, and that's exciting too. So yeah, we're. We're grateful, man. We get to do a job that we love, and sometimes we even get paid for it. You know, and you've got something else very cool that people need to know about, and I didn't even realize you'd had three others, but you've got your fourth guitar effects pedal out, aptly named 1987, after the single off of On the Prowl. How do you tell the technical people how you want the guitar pedal to make it sound? Do you leave it up to Satchel, or do you just go, I want it to sound like this, and then let people smarter than uh, us figure that out? Well, Satchel works with a group of scientists that develop different sounds for different audio techniques. And he put together a team that worked really well together. And he basically described what we, you know, we all discussed as a band what we want to do for the next pedal. And so he, you know, he's more under the hood guy with guitar stuff because, dude, I don't know about electronics. But, you know, what we decided to do, we wanted a pedal that you could plug into and you would get the sound like a white snake sound, a scorpion sound and Van Halen mixed together, which, in our opinion, is the 1987 year. So that's why we named it 1987, the pedal itself, and that's what it sounds like. You plug in, you're from 1987 on guitar. Nice. So Satchel actually got to do some Science Panther with actual scientists this this time. Yeah, you know, thanks for bringing that up. As I was telling you that story, I thought we should do that episode and bring those scientists in. Yeah, see, I was That'd just really thinking good. the same thing. You know, if he's already got it going on. Let's have a sound scientist do something. By the way, thanks for that. Yeah, you can 100% have that idea. It's totally all all for you. And thanks for taking the time to call in. Uh, I hope you get in touch with Robin. I'm going to see you guys uh, out in concert for my first time ever. I've planned on it, and I've tried, and I've, for some reason I've just missed, so I've got to go for my first time to see Steel Panther in concert. All right, well, I just want to make a few suggestions. First of all, take a little nap before you come so you can stay up late. And remember to drink lots of water because you're going to drink a lot of beer. And make sure to book an Uber. Also, thanks for having us on, dude. Really appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you again, and I look forward to seeing you at the show. Thank you, Michael. Have a great day, buddy. Later, bro. Bye.